Hello, this is Edo Ray from Bricks Maven. Another day, another video. Today, we are going to look. <laughs> what? Hello, this is Edo Ray from Bricks Maven. It's another day, so another day, another tutorial. And today we'll be looking at breakout images. So there have been uh, some uh, videos created already about breakout images, but I just wanted to make a video where I just go through all the different kinds of situations you might want to use the breakout image technique on and just go through them one by one explaining how it actually works so that once you encounter the same situation in your next website project, um, you would easily understand how it works and you'll be able to easily implement it without looking for a reference or without um, you know look have to having to look up a tutorial because if you understand it obviously you can always come back to this tutorial and watch it but um, uh, yeah I just wanted to also say that since um, automatic CSS has uh, released the content grid it's much easier to create a breakout uh, in this case breakout images or breakout areas uh, however you might want to call it but it just makes it real easy to just position the image where you want it to be I must say it makes it really easy um, I might also do some tutorials on um, the co using the content grid but for now we'll just be using vanilla CSS of obviously um, on this build itself I'm using um, automatic CSS but um, I'll be using mostly um, the just vanilla CSS to do this so uh, it works anywhere you might want to use this so first of all we're doing four different versions right so this version you see up here is going to be full width meaning full width so it's a stretch you know to fill the whole screen that's what we want right but there's a container here right and the image we want the image to break out of the container you want it to break out here so that will be the first one this is one okay let's go to the second one here we want it to just stretch to the right side of the screen so it has to move here and it has to fill this whole area okay and the next one is just the alternate version of it so you want it to fill this whole area so it will be moving this way and the last one is I, I let me just move my head away I usually call this the this is the more complex one and why is it complex it's because it doesn't sit in the middle so you need to do some extra calculations to ensure that it obviously stretches to the right right and it fills the whole area and the technique I'm going to show you is actually um, calculating the correct um, width that is needed to stretch to the end of your screen so um, Without further ado, let's jump into this tutorial and get it started. So, I have already done some some styling just to get the structure right, right? So, this is using a two column grid, two column grid, and this is using a 12, 12 column grid. And I split it into four, this is spanning four uh, columns and this is spanning eight columns. And as for the top one, this is just a simple section with a container. There's a content and an image. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, first things first. To be able to um, break out of uh, the, the container, we have to use viewport units. That's very important to use the viewport units. And to be able to control the size of our image we have to also give it a height and we can use an aspect ratio for that but I would rather just give it a height so a height of uh, 64 rem 
this case and then um, we just need to then go to the max width and give this a hundred view uh, viewport uh, width and also on the width we have to give it a hundred viewport width the default um, max width on a as I've seen on a, I think it's on an image or even on a block is hundred percent so because it's hundred percent if I set the width to a hundred viewport width it doesn't break out of the container so we need to set the max width to view 100 viewport width for it to actually break out so it overrides the default setting so that's important to know so once you get it like this to make things visually clear to understand how this works I'll go to our border I want to give the image a border so that you can see what's happening solid and then red and no inset let's go for inset go for two three let me take another color that's bright or something mm. why is it so yellow why is it not strong enough let's go for 10 or something and okay let's go back to red okay we can see this right So, I'll also give the container a border, just so that we can see what's going on. There's a reason why I'm doing this. Uh, give it green. Okay, so, <clears throat> as you can see, the container ends here. You see where the green ends? So, we know that the image is breaking out of the container. But, 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 um, at this point... The image is stretching out of the section so this is this is actually 100 viewport width but it's stretching out so we, what we want to do is get this image um, you want to get this image in the middle right so what what we can do is or this how this works is you go to um, the margin and we want to actually push this image um, 50 viewport width uh, to uh, actually to the right. So it's so bad. it's going. So how do I say this? So we have to, we're giving it a minus a negative value of 50 viewport width. See what happens. So we say negative 50 viewport width, and then. So give it, yeah. So we give it a negative fifty uh, viewport width, and nothing happens. There's a reason for that. Let me just show it right here. Let me refresh, and let's check the code. The DOM. Let me move my face, and we'll see here on the figure tag. And the margin is set to zero on all sides so you see it's not um, applying what we set so we need to give it an, an, uh, an important I noticed that in the new bricks um, update um, this uh, specificity is coming up so um, yeah if you try to like change I don't know if it change to change the margin values it doesn't apply so I don't know if you guys have experienced that but that's what I experienced so I need to add important here and when I was first doing this and trying to understand this I didn't know how it actually centered um, the how it actually got the image to fill the space of the of the sorry fill the space of the whole screen but the way that i understood this is i did the following so i zoomed all the way out somehow i was just i just i think it's just by instance i actually understood this so i zoomed out to the maximum right so if we go 
Let me see where's my where is my looking for the figure tag, look for the figure tag. Where is it? Okay here. As you can see my uh, margin left is now being applied and we also need to push it back to the left 50% so this will actually fix the problem right as you can see now it's it's um, uh, it's it's centered actually so this is how I understood it I had all my because I also followed the tutorial at first and it tells you to add all this stuff right so I was trying to really understand how this works so by turning these things off I totally understood how it works so if you if you push if you set the positioning the left to 50 percent it will actually look it pushes um, it pushes the image to the middle of the container right the container is green and look it lines up in the middle with all the images because before without the positioning it goes to the end it goes to the beginning of the container so we're pushing it to the middle it's in, it's in the middle of the container and then by adding the margin left minus 50 viewport width so it's pushing it back 50 viewport width it ends up in the middle right I hope I hope some of maybe some of you got it maybe some of you didn't get it but let me just let me just um, replay let me just repeat it again as you can see the image is sitting at the edge of the container if you say left 50% it will push it to the middle and we all know that from the middle from the middle of the screen to the edge of the screen is 50 viewport width right so if I give it a minus 50 viewport width it should now align in the middle and you're basically done and look the bar I can there might be a little bit uh, space might be the the space bar causing the overflow but um, if we just go back on my section we'll just apply the overflow hidden and basically you're done and that's how you actually center this so to finish things here I'll add a 50% and it's centered and on my uh, section I had hidden so this is done I'm not going to really like go into responsive it's just to show you how to do it on the desktop okay so we move on to the next one I hope I hope that was I hope it was clear what I just explained if not let me know because um, I'm I recently started making all these videos and I'm trying to um, explain the things I learn and I noticed that obviously the more I do it it's, it should get better over time but I also want to get feedback from you guys how uh, if my explanations are clear right okay so this one is a little bit more easier to do I'm also going to add a I want to do the same thing I did with the first one so I'm also applying a border it's five pixels uh, inset green and also the image I also give it a border 10 pixels inset all sides and yeah red okay so it's set so now this one is a little bit more simple this already sits in the middle of the screen right so all we need to do is first of all give it a height and we just basically need to do the same thing. Max width is on is 100%. So we want our max width to be 50 viewport width, right? And then we want our width to be 50 viewport width. Mm -hmm. And we get the same the same thing again here. Right? Let's me. Then let me check this on the front page. I still have to add a uh, 
uh, overflow hitting. Let me just refresh. I see we have the same border thing going on here. So let's let us um, add hidden to the overflow. And we're done, right? So we have basically our section, our breakout to the right. When it comes to the left side, it becomes tricky. Why is that? Let's find out. So let's do the same thing here again. Container, border, five pixels on all sides, inset and green, and also on our image, we need the border. Um, let's give it one pixel. Set all sides and red, and we can see it. So, 10 pixels. Okay, so now I have set the um, borders right now. The next thing is we're doing we're, we're going to repeat the same thing as we did with the right on the right side, right? So, 64 rem as height, and now. The max width is over 100 percent but want it to be 50 viewport width here we go and the width has to be 50 viewport width but look it grows to the right right and now how how can i push it to this side so we need to do a little bit more calculation right to get it to get it right so how do we do that so um since um, since this is this way, right? The width is 50 viewport width. The max width is 50 viewport width. It is pushing it to the right side. It's basically doing this, right? So if it's on the right side, it works directly. If it's on the left side, it pushes it uh, to the to the to the right. There are actually two ways of doing this. You can remove the height from the image, put the height on the media. Uh, set your media to position relative set your image to position absolute and then there's a why am i what am i doing let me show you guys let me show you so this this one way you can do it this way so i take uh yeah, i'm taking the height off go to my media and put the height here whoops put the height here so the height is on my media and it's not on the image and then i set this to relative set my image to absolute right set the i think i need to set this to is it right am i i need to make the right zero if i'm correct and then it works why is this happening because i am i i am um, telling it to align to the right so once it aligns to the right to grow to the left Whereas by default, if you notice, if you're just writing plain HTML, if you increase the height, they all grow to the right. The image starts growing. So if you add, if you increase your image width, it grows. So it's, it, what is it the other way around? So it starts here and it grows like this, right? So by setting this to uh, zero, it will it will it will anchor itself to the right side of the of the media uh, element and then to grow that way because look here if i say 40 see let me just do it so it goes if it increases going to the left right whereas if i remove this and if this was by default set to zero it will grow to the other side so yeah this is a uh, another way of doing it but let's say you don't want to go this route because you don't want to do all this extra positioning stuff let's take it off there's an other way of doing it i'll put the height back remove position relative from here remove this height we're just going to do a calculation and i'll be doing that on the browser on the front end so that we can now look at what what is going on with the image 
and the containers. Okay, so <clears throat> we go to the we need to be on the figure figure element and here again we're going to have to use um, important again we're going to have to use a calc function so first first things first let me show you if I do margin we need to do margin left because we want to push it to the left so margin left in this case and then we say um, I do minus 50 viewport width nothing happens because I need to do important important look what happens if I do minus 50 viewport width it pushes the image outside of the container right to the left of to the left side of the screen now I want it to be in the middle and the only way to get it there is to then um, after uh, pushing it to a negative 50 viewport width is to then add an, is to then add 100 percent to get it to the middle and why is that because look at this if I was just saying like margin left 50 percent okay I'll have to have important if you if you add margin left 50 percent it moves it to the middle of your uh, media element con co uh, container, right? Sorry, your media element or your media block. If you say 100%, it moves it to the edge, just outside of your media, um, your media block. So by combining the two, this is what we get. So we say cog. And here I'll add the minus 50 viewport width plus a hundred percent. We get it at the middle. So first thing it moved it, uh, a ne it moved it to negative 50 viewport width. That's outside of the container. But to get it at the middle, I have to do uh, plus hundred percent, right? To get it to the mid to the middle, because the the width of the media block is a hundred percent. You get it? So to move it, to make sure that it moves back to the middle, we need to move it 100%. And that is how you get the correct size or that's how you position it correctly and you get the same effect. So I'm just going to basically copy this and just make sure that my screen goes back to normal. And where's my media? Take the media and just put it right here boom so there we have it and now we come to the to the model of breakouts the one that can be very complex but once you understand how to do it it's uh, quite easy so let's do the same thing that we do again let's just add our borders and the reason why, you know, maybe you might not need a board. That's how I understood it. So I'm trying to explain it through how I uh, finally understood how this worked. So uh, <laughs> I hope it's beneficial to you guys. Okay, so it also gave our... Wait, it's in the way. My head is in the way. And the controls of loom is in the way. So image... Uh, let me see, 10 pixels, uh, also in set, then red. Okay, we have, oh, keep in mind that the the border image are one, right? I mean, it may seem that it's pushing the image in, but yeah. For those that might think uh, that it's uh, not part of it. Okay, uh, yeah. So to get to get this right, you might say, okay, a 50 viewport width. We know that's not 50 viewport width because it's not the image is not sitting in the middle of the of our grid container. We know that our grid container consists of 12 columns, right? So if we know that our first column spans four and our second column spans eight, 
and we know that uh, if we divide 12 by 2 is 6 so if it spans 6 columns 6 columns would be the middle right but in this case our image spans uh, 8 columns so we're we need to know how uh, what is the width of one column so that we can calculate two columns right and those two columns we can add it to the 50 viewport width to get the correct width I hope I explained that very well right so um, if not maybe by making it visually for somebody right so to give an explanation this is the middle I have 12 columns right I don't know if this is correct I didn't count so this is the six columns here six columns here this will soon disappear because loom doesn't keep it long here there it goes so we have the six columns here six columns here this is the middle right this is eight columns this is four columns so I'm, I need to know how long uh, so I'm so it's two columns longer right this is supposed to be 50 viewport width see so uh, I need to know how long how what is the width of one column and we can calculate that because we know in this case my container width is uh, 1280 pixels so I can divide that by 12 and to give me the size of one column and then I can do that times 2 and then plus 50 viewport width and then to give me the size to give me the size of this thing so I'll know what is the size of this so I hope this drawing of mine made it much more clearer what I'm trying to do here so I'll finally get the size of this thing okay, so let's get started so we're just going to use a calculation okay and ACSS has ACSS has a variable for your content width so uh, that is something that we can use wait my camera moved did you see that okay so let's get started we have to go to our layout give it the correct height 64 RAM and then we need to um, add a calculation to our width so it's calc and it's 50 viewport width like I said it's plus and here comes the calculation I, think I need to do this twice if I'm not yeah so we have our like I said my I'm, I'm not going to use the variable I'm just going to use um, my container width um, the value of my container width which is 1280 in your setup it can be 1400 it can be 1120 whatever content width you set you can use it here um, so it will be 1280 pixel divided by 12 so by doing this I already know what one column is and then we we'll say 2 we do it times 2 so um, I want to, so I do it times 2 because my image um, the media block that contains my image is spanning 8 columns and uh, uh, um, from this if it was spanning six columns I could have done 50 viewport width and it's done so I need to, to and like I said I need to know 50 50 viewport width plus two extra columns so now we need to add our important oh no I don't need to I don't I don't need to do it here it's my bad I need to copy this and add it so now it will give me the correct size as you can see and don't forget to add your overflow hidden 
to remove the overflow. I will now proceed to remove the borders because I don't need them anymore. Remove the borders, remove the borders. Wait, let me just, let's first check out the last example on the front end. Now, there it is sitting perfectly. And, oh, I wanted to show you um, one more thing. This is why um, I will copy this and wait, let me just, just put it here, save it. The reason why you need to um, set these things correctly is for the following reason. You can obviously just set your section to hidden, right? And then you do the following. You just say 100 to report width or 100 to report width. And then it stretches all the way out. And this is an exaggerated example because I know there might be some of you that might be trying to like find out what's the perfect width, especially in this situation, right? You might be say you might be doing 70, 70, and I've done this too, right? You might be trying to find out what is the what is the correct width you know okay it's not it has to be more 62 so let me bring this back to 62 okay i think this is the correct width we save you go to the front end and you know and this is and this is this is where it goes wrong let's say someone has a a larger screen right person zooms out wait let me go zoom out Right. I think I made it long long enough. If I was to let me let me see if I did something like fifty two. Oh no. Oh, I didn't save. Wait. Okay, to still stretch. I've come in situations where it was too short or anyways you're better off uh, making it as long as possible but the, the main issue I have here is that you're missing a part of your image as you can see a part of them I can see a part of the man while the whole image is much more com why you see we can see this candle thing whereas if you have the correct calculation you preserve your image and this would not matter if you're like using a um, if you just have a shape with a gradient it won't actually matter because it's just let's say you have just one color it would matter you just put a hundred viewport width but if you're using an image um, and if you just put a hundred viewport width it would just cut off a great part of the image and you might not want that so this is would be a better representation because it's showing you the whole image because it has the correct size right so that's why you need to use the correct calculations to get the correct size. And if you were doing it for the for the other side, you have to for the left side you would have to do something similar like I did here. You know, you have to do it minus this number and plus 100% to get it right. Because you just have to apply the same principles. So you might want to if I hope my I really hope my explanation was clear and that um, you guys could follow this video. I've shown you how to um, use the breakout uh, technique in different situations or the most common situations you might uh, encounter when once you're building a website. Just removing all the all the borders everywhere. Take my face down so that we have a clean look at the end result. Okay, so this is it. We have our container there. We did it. Oh, why is it? Uh, oh, I don't remember adding this. Okay, so we have a full width image. We have our image that is stretching to the right side. We have an image that is stretching to the that's breaking out to the left side and we have our comp I call it a complex breakout where it's uh, not your standard uh, breakout uh, size right and it doesn't matter what size it is I think the best thing you can do is always use a 12 grid column it's easier to calculate it could also be a 6 grid column just you just need a number that you can work with 
don't um if you're doing something like uh min if you if you have like a three you know three two column like so you'll be doing something like min max three f r and then two f r that might be a little bit hard to calculate and uh, you know so I would just say keep it easy for yourself you know use you make it a uh, use an even number you just need even numbers twelve uh eight uh t four it's easier to uh, calculate your sizes. So that's the end of it. Um, I hope this video was uh, educational. And uh, once again, if I missed anything, let me know. If I could do something different, if I didn't do it, if I totally messed it up, if I messed up the explanation, let me know. If you liked it, uh, like the video, subscribe, comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.